Okay, so right now we are going to specifically talk about a translation. Um, your book does um, some different things with notation. I am not going to stress the different, the different notation. Um, <clears throat> remember, a translation is also called a slide. Okay, so we are taking a figure, and then we are sliding it to a different location. The way that um, typically you see it, you'll see a rule, and it'll say something like x minus 2 and y plus 1. What that means is that on your given coordinates, so let's start off with, I'm going to go ahead and use some graph paper here. <clears throat> so if I have g at 2, 3, and I have h at 5, 0. So here's g, here's h, and I'm going to go ahead and put um, j clear over there at negative 3, negative 4. So if this is my pre-image, and I cannot stress enough to use straight edges, please. Make your diagrams much more crisp, and they truly do look like they are congruent transformations because they are going to look congruent and not be some weird jaggedy line. Okay, there's a couple things that you can do for this. If I know that I'm using the rule of x minus 2 and y plus 1, then I can do exactly what that says to do. If I'm at g, I'm going to subtract 2 from the x, and I'm going to add 1 to the y. It gives me 0, 4. So even if we don't have this graphed, so g prime would be at the order pair of 0, 4. If we are just looking at a graph, we can move, because we're in the x, we can move to the left 2 and up 1 and that would be my g prime. So you can either quote unquote, you know, count boxes or you can actually apply this rule to each of my coordinates. So if I have 5, I'm going to go to the left 2 and I'm going to add 1. It gives me the order pair of 3, 1 and that would be h prime. So if I went to the left 2 and up 1, that would be h prime and do the same thing with j and do minus 2 and a plus 1. Gives me negative 5 and a negative 3 and that would be my coordinates for j prime. So j I would go to the left 5, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 and down 3 and that would be something's wrong. Oops, I'm doing this wrong. It should be to the left 2 and up 1. Oopsie, I was using my new coordinates anyway from there. So that would be my J prime. So if I use my straight edge, and neatly with my drawing, because this is a translation and a congruence transformation, then these two shapes better look identical. Okay, just a little FYI, more so than anything, is that this distance from here to here and here to here and here to here, those are called vectors. So you might see that on the ACT. Um, I will try to hit those a little bit later, talking more specifically about what these actually are. So if I am sliding from here to here, this would be a vector, a vector, and another vector. And that is why the book will often use the vector symbols. So as of right now, we are not going to do that. Let's say that we have, I'm going to cover up that rule. Let's say that we have our primes. So I'm going to make this A prime, make this B prime, and I'll make this piece C prime. Okay. So 
I haven't done anything with my coordinates yet. Okay, so there's my primes. So I have a prime. I'm going to write a rule. Okay, so there's my rule. Oopsie, you can't see it. Um, X minus 5 and Y minus 2. But the reason why this is different is because we are starting off with the prime. So we are going backwards. So I need to figure out, okay, what are the coordinates of my actual image? So if I have A prime at 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So negative 5 and a positive 1. I'm going to leave a little space here. B prime is at 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, 4. Negative 3, negative 4. And C prime is at negative 2, negative 1. Well, I'm going backwards. So somewhere up here is where my original figure is going to be. So instead of subtracting 5, I need to now add 5 because I'm going backwards. So I'm going to add 5 to this, and I'm going to add 2 to that one. Gives me the order pair of 0, 3. So that means that my original pre-image would be at the order pair of 0, 3. 0, 3. And there's where my A would be. So let's think about that in relation to what we just did. If I am at A and I'm going to A prime, then I would follow this rule. I would go to the left 5 and down 2. So it works. So I'm going to go backwards again because I'm going from my primes to my pre-image. So I'm again going to add 5 and I'm going to add 2. So that means B is at the order pair of 2 and negative 2. Do the same thing with my C. I'm going to add 5 and I'm going to add 2. Gives me the order pair of 3 and 1. So B, I already did, C is at 3 and 1. Oopsie, that is not a prime. So let me draw this up. Okay, so these should be congruent because they are congruent transformations. I'm going to do a quick check and go, if you will, forward with them. So if I'm at A, left 5, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, down 2, that checks. Same thing from C, left 5, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, down 2, that one checks. B to B prime, I forgot my prime over here. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and down 2, so it checks. So that means that this shape is congruent to that shape. Again, that is a congruence transformation. So when you are doing these, you need to pay attention whether or not you are going from the pre-image to the image, or if you're going from the um, image to the pre-image.